glass dip pen review that's what we're doing in this video i'm also going to ink and then paint in watercolor a lupin flower welcome back to my channel if we haven't met before my name is michelle on this channel you'll find all things watercolor drawing color mixing techniques and a little bit of mixed media too please do consider subscribing it's free and if you click the bell notification you can get notified every time i have a new video for you i make one free video a week here on youtube on a thursday with extra content on saturdays for my patreon subscribers so if you've ever worked in ink and watercolour, you'll know that that a technique is usually called either pen and wash or line and wash, the idea being that you ink the lines and then place the watercolour on top. It's a really great method, for, especially for very complex subjects that will take you a very long while to paint because you can put all the details in with the ink and then just drop the colour on top, which can go on a lot more loosely and a lot more quickly than usual. Now, I would usually use one of these. This is a metal nib dip pen. Um, there are advantages to this pen, um, they're fairly cheap, you can get replaceable nibs for them and also, and most importantly, if you drop them on the floor they don't break. Now, my new glass pen is still in the box and one of the reasons it's still in the box is because I'm always breaking stuff. Why I can do incredibly detailed drawings, I can draw anything I look at, I'll still walk into the kitchen table after I finish the drawing. I still, you know, I go for the light switch that was moved to the other side of the doorway, you know, three years later after the electrician moved it. I'm clumsy. I have no spatial awareness. I walk into stuff and I'm always dropping things. So a glass pen is a dangerous thing, but they look so pretty and they're not expensive. So I couldn't resist trying one. So that's what we're going to trial today. In this video, I'm going to draw and paint a looping flower for you as we go along, just so that you get um, a real idea of how it behaves. So let's get started. I'm going to point the camera downwards now. So in a second, I'm going to open my new pen. But first of all, this is the photograph I'm going to be working from today. This is a lupin flower and I took this photograph while I was teaching in some botanical gardens. I am also, uh, if it wasn't enough fun trying a new pen, I'm also going to try some new paper today. So I normally work on Saunders Waterford High White, uh, certainly for my, uh, my proper paintings, I would say, rather than demonstration pieces. And I've discovered recently that that paper is not vegan. I myself have been vegan and vegetarian for many, many years. Some papers have a gelatin um, sizing, a coating on top of them, and some papers don't. As far as I'm concerned, there's no point me throwing things in the bin just because I discovered that, you know, they're not vegan and I bought them 20 years ago. It's just um, environmentally wasteful, if you ask me, and just silliness. But I do want to, going forward, make sure that the materials I buy for my own use are vegan. And this is Canson heritage paper. I don't know how it's going to be but some um, will find out won't we. So let's look at my new pen. So as I said I, I did open the box and have a, a little little peek in it. I can't remember how much it cost. I think it was probably around the ten dollars or under mark if you're in the US. I got this on Amazon. I will put a link to it below. Um, if, if I can't find an American link I'll find something similar. There are lots of brands of these. They're really quite cheap. They sort of go anywhere from between $5 and $20. Um, and that would be anything between sort of, you know, £4 and, um, and about £18 English money. It does worry me a bit that it looks so delicate. I think it'll be fine as long as I don't drop it on concrete. And don't put that past me. I've done it so many times. I have a habit of buying these um, unbreakable crystal nail files. I've got through three or four now so far. And I tend to take them in and out of the studio, you know, across the expanse of concrete path. And um, therein lies the problem because I always drop them and they always break. What I like about this one is that it's got this little cute little thing. I am on a slope here for filming, but um, you'll be able to see. You can actually just, you've got somewhere to rest it so you're not getting ink all over your table while you're not using it. And um, after I break it, as I certainly will... I can do that as well. So that's good too. So I'm going to be comparing. Um, I won't necessarily use this one today, but I, I'm well aware of how these ones work and how they uh, how they come out. One thing I noticed on a tutorial that I watched about these ones is that it said you get a more regular line, which is not necessarily good or bad, really. So with a pen such as this, the metal has a groove down the center. The metal is actually split into two pieces. So what happens is you have these two pieces on the nib and if you press harder, they splay out so you get a thicker line. That said, I think what happens with mine is they get so gunked up with ink that they no longer separate much when you press them. Um, so you also get um, the line of ink will also um, get thinner 
as you draw obviously because the ink's going to run out. Now one thing that's said about these is that they last longer after dipping in because you haven't got anything here to hold the ink. In fact you don't want a big bubble of ink at the back there because it tends to blob. But with these here you have these grooves that go all the way up and I think the idea is that the ink goes up the grooves and sits and um, and then sort of is gradually uh, gradually let out down towards the nib. So it's going to be really interesting. Before I do that I'm going to do a drawing. So I'm going to do just a light drawing of this. I'm not going to show you every single stage of this today because it would be, you know, three hours long. Um, but I'll show you a little bit of how I would go about drawing some of this and then we'll move on to the painting. So I've got a very soft pencil here. This is an 8B. I would normally use something like a 4 or a 6B, but to be uh, perfectly honest, I can't find one. So it's going to be fine. I do like to uh, to use a soft pencil. Um, some people prefer a harder pencil, but I like a soft pencil. So I'm just going to get a rough idea of where this sits on the paper because you have a lot of leeway with flowers. So I'm not going to bother to scale up, you know, exactly. And there's a slight difference in proportions on the paper as well. So all I'm going to do really to start with is just look at the angle that the flower is at and think about getting that. And also make a point, um, make a mark for the top where I want the top to come and then roughly where I want the bottom to come. And I'm going to start drawing from there. I'm not going to draw every single detail of this. Now, normally I would, but the thing with ink is if you have a detailed drawing, a pencil drawing that's too detailed, what can happen is you can end up slavishly copying every little bit in ink and you lose the hand-drawn effect that ink has. So it's really important that you don't use your underdrawing as kind of a paint by numbers and that it makes your whole movement of your hand stilted so that you're not drawing naturally. So all I'm going to do is start putting in guidelines for where these um, these little sort of, um, I don't know what they are, these little buds, I'm going to call them buds, I'm sure they're not, but um, I'm going to call them buds. These little buds are around here. They're almost like a miniature flower within a flower. And each one, as you go up, each one is a little more closed and a little different shape. So it's a fascinating sort of flower. And then I'm going to put some of these main leaves in towards the base. I'm not going to try and do everything here, all of this background. I'm just going to put the flower head itself in and the main leaves. And I'm only going to just indicate where they go in the pencil before going into draw with the pen. So you're looking just like with watercolour you would put in only as much pencil as you need. The same with the ink. Don't do more than you need in the pencil otherwise it will make your ink drawing very very stilted. So this may look like complete craziness but what I'm doing is getting an idea of the angle of the flower. Excuse if you can hear the rain on the roof by the way. Um, this is uh, England in the summertime. At least it's not too hot in here today. And I'm getting a rough idea of the, uh, the rotation of these uh, these little things here. So you can see it's really important that I get this circular effect and the fact that they really do loop all the way round. And then I've got these leaves here and I'm getting the centre point and perhaps an idea of where the leaves go. And really that's as much as I'm going to do with pencil. I did think initially that I'd do a lot more pencil but actually I feel fine about going straight in with the pen now. Now if you're not experienced in drawing you will need to do more drawing than I have done um, in order that you don't make too many mistakes when it comes to putting the ink in. So if you need to do more drawing than me to get this right then absolutely do that. So I've got some acrylic ink here and this is um, De La Roni FW ink in sepia. I find sepia a little bit less harsh than black, certainly for things that are natural like plants I do prefer using sepia to black. The reason I like this one is because it has this pipette inside so I can just get as much ink out as I want. And I'm going to decant it here into this little pot. This is just a little eyeshadow pot. Really, really useful and a lot less chance of knocking over a small ink pot like this than a large one like this. The other problem with working straight into a pot like this and why you should always decant is that when you dip in, you really will dip in too far and then if you pick up too much ink, there's a greater chance of it blobbing. So with this, I can dip in just a little bit. You'll also notice I've got some tissue paper here. I've got one piece of tissue paper in case I need to blot or to take some ink off of the pen. But I've got another one here that I'll tend to lean on while I'm drawing or painting. And that's just to stop any oil that's naturally in the skin of my arms and hands from getting onto the watercolour paper. So I'm going to have a little bit of a practice on a scrap of paper next and then we'll get on with the looping. So just for comparison, I'm going to use my normal dip pen first of all, which is the metal nibbed type. 
it is quite old which means that it's got a lot of ink built up on the uh, on the nib with, which I actually prefer because I find when they're brand new they barely pick up any ink at all this one's going well here actually getting quite a long line of ink right so let's now try this one so I've seen them um, on YouTube tutorials and people dip them in and the ink actually travels up the, uh, the little spiral. So if that happens, I'm going to be so impressed, it's going to be like magic. Okay, so I'm going to dip in and I think it is, to an extent, travelling up a little bit. I'm actually quite happy not to dip it in, you know, all the way up to here. So let's have a go and see what sort of line we get. Okay, so the first thing I'm noticing is it's a much more narrow line. And the other thing that I've heard about these pens, there we go, a big blob there, I think I dipped it in too far actually. The other thing I've heard about these pens is that each one is different because they're manufactured, obviously I imagine they're blown by hand. I imagine you get a, a different amount of broadness to the stroke. So it's traveling quite well. I must say it's, um, it's a lot more of a narrow line than I was expecting. And here we see it's starting to run out a little bit. But generally speaking, it travels well, doesn't it? So I'm going to get on now and start inking the uh, the parts of my drawing from top to bottom because it's always important with ink like this, it stays wet for quite some time. Now you can, there is another technique where you can get water on a paintbrush and you can spread this ink across. I've actually got another video on that, so I'll link to that up in the information cards above. You can click on that if you want to watch that one later on. But I'm not going to do that technique in this video just because it would take a very long time. So I've got my picture, I've got a drawing that's really just guidelines of where to place things, I've got my ink, I've got this piece of paper to lean on, and if I should have some kind of accident with the ink, I can blot it as well. Never try and get this ink off the paper, it's simply, um, you'll just make a bigger mess. So I'm going to go in now and start drawing with this pen. So I feel like I'm dipping in a little bit too often. I, th I think that's because I'm used to a pen that gives a much thicker line. And the other reason I like a small well like this is so that you can just hold it close to where you're working. Much less chance of something um, dripping like mad if you're not you know, moving it across your paper so far. So as I said, you may need to do a little more drawing than this. Do remember that if something's in front of something else you're going to have to make sure that you you almost do things in the right order. At this point if you're enjoying this video and you're getting some value from it can I ask you for a quick favour could you just click the like button please if you interact with this video that's like share subscribe or even leave me a nice comment or a nasty comment um, it sends a signal to the YouTube algorithm that this is a good video and they'll show it to more people so therefore I can help more people learn to paint I'd be really really grateful if you can click like so that you don't have lines you know you don't want one line going through another line if something like that happens and you just draw something wrong really don't worry about it you know don't let it stress you out i think i've got too much ink on there i'm a little bit worried that's going to blob and let's take this up here yeah if you, if you make mistakes with permanent ink like this it's really very important that you just leave them alone because the more you do to them, the more you are just going to cause mess. You won't get the initial mark off, but you will cause a lot more mess. So I'm just working up here. I'm not doing an exact drawing. I'm just using the, the picture that I've got as a reference point. If it starts to look unbalanced or I think I need a, you know, another little flower head, a little petal somewhere else, I'll just add an extra one in. No one is going to uh, to know which looping you've worked from. You know, this does not need to be a, a looping that's so exact its own mother will recognise it in the supermarket. So I'm just going to continue working down now. And you notice that with each of these uh, the, each of these levels of flower petal, there's a slight change. In the shape some are longer than the others some are more rounded and we start to see as they get down to this level we start to get these little sort of splits in them appear as the little petals are the little colored bits are poking out They're almost in their own sort of little pod aren't they and i'm going to continue drawing these in so you'll notice that i'm using um quite a sketchy line part of that is because this is a very fine um 
pen it's, it's giving me very fine marks which is is fine but fine fine we don't want it to be almost invisible so it helps to go over things a few times and it helps to get that hand drawn look now it doesn't matter if you had to do a lot more pencil drawing than me you can still when you go in with the actual uh, with the actual pen itself you can still go over roughly where the pencil is you know don't slavishly copy because you do just end up with this really stilted drawing and we, we want it to look like we went straight in with the ink we're an expert we had no need of underdrawings so even if you did a massive underdrawing you rub it out later on you just want it to look like you didn't have to do any drawing you just grabbed your pen and went straight for it because that's just the kind of crazy person you are. You have no need of safety nets. Okay, so I'm going to continue working further down until I get to the bottom here. I won't film every part of this because it would be a three hour tutorial, but I'll show you a little bit more of how I change the shapes as I go further down. I'm going to put this um, photograph up as a copyright free photo in my patrons group. So if you're a member of my um, five dollar a month patreon you get some copyright free photos and i also give my patrons um, black and white copies of the same photograph so that they can see the tones in them i'm also going to i'm going to paint the uh, the flower and the leaves for you today but i'm going to put the background in on um, on a patreon video as well so that if you're on my patrons you'll be able to see that i mean don't panic i do lots of uh, lots of other tutorials on this youtube channel it's if you don't want to join Patreon or if you haven't got the money for it there will be lots of free background tutorials for you here on YouTube as well but these videos just become a bit too long otherwise and so that's why I do just carry some of them on for those people that are able to support me on Patreon. So working my way further down you can see there's this kind of stalk thing going on here you can start to see the the center part of the uh, of the flower head you can also see that i dripped some ink here and um, i just blotted it i didn't try and remove it there is just no point trying to remove these things now i'm onto these uh, onto these flower heads down here and um, if i show you the photograph you can see they're a lot more open down here and a lot more of an interesting shape as well so I'm being very careful with sort of um, observation here. As I said, if you're new to drawing, you're going to want to put these in first in pencil, just roughly so that you're getting that idea of the shape without ending up with everything too kind of um, stilted. And we're overall aiming for this circular effect here. If you do them across in straight lines, you're not going to end up with the flower head itself looking symmetrical and looking like it's actually you know, three-dimensional and circular so you want to get this real idea of depth to it and you can actually see in some places these stems coming out too so just continuing to work here on the flowers I'm just going to move that back there do always be aware that your skin always always contains oil and watercolor is just pigment and uh, and binder and it's, it's very susceptible to being blocked on the paper if you have anything like the oil from your skin or if you've used hand cream anything like that that's also you know can cause you problems also things like you know hairspray furniture spray you've got to be so careful there's all sorts of things that can get on your paper and half of them you won't even know are there until you start the painting so I've nearly finished drawing the flower head I actually liked it better up here where I was using the ink more thickly and the good thing with, with ink um, is that you can actually, like any medium, you can use it in order to show focal points. So areas where I want people to look more, I can literally just go a little bit thicker with the ink. Again, I just keep making these little drips. I think I'm dripping more than I do with the metal pen and I, I seem to be getting through the ink faster as well but overall I'm finding it quite um quite a nice pen to use it's certainly very comfortable to hold I, I think I find this the handle easier to hold I can actually dip into some of these and use them as little there you go little miniature ink rods but I, I do actually enjoy these thicker sort of lumps of ink as it were and as I said you you can use these in order to create a bit more drama and make a bit more of a, of a focal point of certain things so I'm going to do a little bit more on this now and then I'm going to go on to the leaves they've got these sort of centered lines which 
I might consider doing later on in masking through. I'm really interested actually to see if this um, if this pen is actually any good for applying masking fluid. I never use a brush for applying masking fluid. Let's get a little bit of head start on these leaves. Um, but I do use a ruling pen usually to apply masking fluid. But I see no reason, because this is a hard point, I see no reason at all why this couldn't be used for masking fluid. So I might just try a little bit of that later on and um, see how well it does. So I'm going to keep drawing and sketching my leaves out here and then we'll move on to the painting stage. So I've finished my drawing as far as the ink goes. I have quite a few um, blots on it but you know that is the nature of working with ink. I'm not going to worry about them at all. I've got a slight smudge here. Actually they annoy me more than the, uh, the blots do which kind of seem like they should be there. Whereas the bits where I've just lent in the paint and smudged across just um, feel more like bits I should uh, give myself a slap for. So I'm going to look now at what colours I want to use. I've got this sort of warm yellow here. It's slightly up perhaps from a lemon yellow. I've also got this warm peachy pink here which I could mix by just getting a pink and putting a little bit of the yellow in. I may have something in my palette that's exactly right for it. And I've got these, uh, these greens here. There's also some burgundies here on the stem. So I'm going to consider what colours to use. And once I've chosen those, I'm going to drop the background in quite loosely. Um, I'm not going to, as I said, I'm not going to show you the background on this tutorial that will be available on uh, on my Patreon, but it'll just basically be a wet into wet background. I have to consider the tonal contrast here. The leaves are very dark, so I don't necessarily have to go too dark with the background. I'll probably go a little bit darker up the top here so that when I get this light area of the flower petals here, it shows them off against the background. So I've put my background in. As I said, it was just a wet into wet background. I literally just started here, worked my way around, turning the paper when I needed to, dropping in colours, a lot of which I'll be using in the foreground. That may not be the end of the background, but it's enough that I can uh, I can start seeing sort of certain tonal contrast around the flower. Purposely went darker here um, and carried on colours behind so that they looked like they naturally went behind. There are all sorts of complex things you can do in backgrounds, but this is a very complex picture anyway, so I don't think we need to worry too much about any of that. So I've got some white schminky masking fluid. I did have the blue one, which I was very impressed with in terms of um, use and coming off the paper, but it stained my paper blue, which I wasn't happy about at all. So I've moved on to the white one now. It's quite pricey for masking fluids, but I have to say it did work really, really well. So I'm just going to get rid of that bubble there and then we're just going to dip in a little bit and see how this applies. It may not work at all. It doesn't appear at the moment to be coming off the pen. Oh here we go a little bit. Now I'm not convinced at all that much of the masking fluid is coming off there so that's a no for masking fluid because it's not liquid enough it's not running down the nib so it's basically you know the, the nib is very pointed and it's just not doing it so I'm going to swap back to my uh, my ruling pen and we'll apply the masking fluid with that instead. So here's my ruling pen. Um, basically it's a draftsman's tool but um, somebody discovered a while ago that they're really good for applying masking fluid. So I'm going to work around now and apply this masking fluid to my main big leaves. So I've changed to a smaller brush here and I've got the, uh, the cadmium yellow light which is Talon's Rembrandt and then I've got a little bit of the Daniel Smith green gold and I'm just going to with plenty of water just apply it to these top petals here and really just being quite loose with the paint and plenty of water because the good thing about working in pen is that you don't have to be too precise and you can allow areas to go over the edge of other areas. I'm going to get a tiny amount of this Viridian and just drop a little bit in there too and just blend. So we've got some strong yellows up there. As we come down here, the colour gets much, much paler. What I'm going to do is actually neutralise it by using some of the pink that I'm going to use here. This is SAA Permanent Rose. It's a really strong colour. I'm going to put a little bit of this in here and then a little bit of the blue. What we're looking at making is a really neutral colour just mixing until we get that very soft sort of creamy off-white. It may look like brown in there but as you apply it here as long as you put plenty of water you 
going to see we've just got this neutral color here I'm starting to get into the area where I've got these pink bits appearing so I'm going to be careful not to go over those although I'm trying to work loosely and I will also go in as well here and there with a little bit of the yellow though I'm trying to work loosely I need those pinks to be bright and if I've painted over them with yellows and this sort of beige color I've mixed here they're just not going to be so I'm going to be although I want it to look as though, as though I'm being really carefree with the brush I'm going to be quite careful to leave at least some white paper where the pink bits are so that I can get those nice brights in there so just working down here these um, these outside bits that um, sit outside the pink they get much brighter and yellower further down but up here there's still this rather pale color so there you can see I've come down with the warm yellows going to these pale colors and leaving gaps for my bright pinks and I do love this cadmium yellow light it's quite a different color to lemon it's just got a little bit more warmth and a little bit less acidity it's so useful for flower painting so those are all my sort of pale greens and yellows and neutral shades in I've changed my water before doing the pink so important with flowers that you get the full brightness to those shades and that you haven't got a bit of mucky water or mucky green or something mixed in it's a mistake to go too um too heavy with colors like this there's a feeling almost that the the darker you put the paint on the more it will glow but that really really isn't the case and especially not when it comes to these uh, these bright pink colors so i'm putting the colors on light like this but if i want to i can get a little bit of sticky paint on my brush so it's not too wet and I've just got areas where I can get almost a shaded effect on. So I've got the light areas and then I've got the dark areas within the same petal. The ones up here I really will keep just very very simple, you know they're just a little bit of colour peeking out and then with the ones that are further down I'll go really really more into sort of shading and into more interesting colours so I'll place the colour on like so and water it down so I've got an overall wash of pink again I'm not being too careful to stay within the lines because that's the uh, that's the beauty of pen and wash you don't have to be quite as neat because the lines will always keep the form of the flower and then there are bits at the top here where I've got a little bit of darkness it's almost a shadow from what's going on above and then I'm going to put a little bit of shadow down one side down the base here and probably just over this side as well to denote that one side is sinking back a little bit so we get almost a, a three-dimensional effect if I want to as well I can actually clean and dry my brush and if I want to I can use the brush to sweep out you know even more of a light highlight and you see you get much more of a three-dimensional effect so now I'm going to go in and paint the rest of my pinks so I've got my pinks in I've left plenty of light pinks in there I'm going to go in now and do this central stem and some of these little um, burgundy stems coming out there will be gaps in here there will be areas um, which were not covered with flower and which should actually have some background color in but that's okay I'll just fill those in after the uh, after the stem is dry I'm going to use some alizarin crimson now do remember if you want a, uh, a discount off Jackman's paints you can pop into the video description and um, there's a little code there and you can get 10% off I'm actually working with Jackman's at the moment to design some brand new sets of paints which will be vegan so there you go stop press and I will of course let everybody know when they're finished they do some great colors they do some great colors they're all handmade and um, my favorite ones actually are the little shimmery ones because I do like things that sparkle so I don't want these to bleed so I'm going to do that stem in a minute so whilst I'm waiting for this to dry I think actually before I put that stem in I'm going to do the leaves so I've got my Jackman's um, Viridian Green here and it's a true Viridian which means that if you ever see something that says Hue, Viridian, Hue or any colour with Hue after it, Hue just means colour but what it tends to indicate, it tends to indicate that the manufacturer has replaced the colour that you're thinking of, the Viridian in this case, with something that looks similar to it. It's often done in student sets as a way of, um, of making a colour a little bit cheaper. And so when you see Viridian Green Hue, it's usually one of, the, uh, one of the thalos, which means it can be incredibly bright. So I'm going to paint these ones here, and then when I go into the front ones, I'll use a brighter mix. 
So I've done a few viridian leaves. You can see here the masking fluid is holding up. And while I've got the viridian on my palette, I'm going to mix in a little bit of the alizarin crimson and just get a slightly um, duller red to do that center stem. So as I said, because red and green are opposites, I can use one cool down the other. So I've got the viridian green now and I've mixed some of the cadmium yellow in now. I don't want them to look too flat so after I've applied them what I'll do is I'll get my brush and clean it and just sweep out a little bit of a highlight along one side so I can just sweep out like this and can you see how if you go too dark it can almost take the life out of the watercolour. You need the paper to show through at least in places. So this is how I'm going to paint the rest of these. I'm going to go in with this quite strong quite opaque paint and then just clean and dry my brush and sweep out a highlight. So that's what I'm going to do now with the rest of the leaves. So my leaves have dried and I've taken off the masking fluid. I'm not happy with the tonal contrast. This I like the fact that it's loose and splashy like pen and wash should be, but I just feel it needs a bit more punch. I could go much darker in the background. That would be one way of approaching it, but I quite like the background. So what I'm going to do is something called glazing. So I'm basically going to go over every single leaf with a uh, with a watery mix of a much stronger green. So I've got this Jackman's Emerald Green here, and I'm just going to mix some of it up with water and take it across the top of my leaves. It will darken and strengthen them. It will also knock these whites out of the center, but you'll be able to still see those lines. So I'm literally taking it over every single one of these background leaves, both the ones that I did in the pure viridian and the ones that I watered down a little bit. So here's my finished picture, quite happy with it. It was a little bit of fun. Um, I have worked much more loosely and uh, splashily than I would normally work. And of course, it's, uh, it's much quicker to work in pen and wash than it is in standard watercolour. And that's the beauty of it. The, uh, the finished image is all about the pen, really. And so you can just chuck the watercolour on top as long as you don't, don't go too dark. You can get away with all sorts of things like going outside of the lines. Now, what about the paper? Um, the paper I quite enjoyed working on. It took the wet into wet well and the dry was okay. I did find that it seemed to um, it seemed to bleed between areas slightly when dry, which is something that can happen when the sizing is off on a paper or has been removed by too much water application. Now, obviously, the gelatine sizing I was looking to avoid by using this paper, no doubt it's sized with something else, something vegetable based. I'm going to reserve judgment on that, though, actually, because it could well be working faster for a YouTube tutorial and in a, uh, a method of painting that's much, much faster than my usual way of working. I may just have not let areas dry, so I'm going to reserve judgment. I've bought about four or five sheets of it, so I'll continue working on it, but certainly I didn't hate the paper. As for the glass pen, really, really interesting. I found it um, possible to work much more sensitively than I had imagined with it being a rigid point. Um, it didn't apply the ink as thickly in places as my um, as my dip pen, but this is a very old dip pen. It's um, it, I've allowed the ink to sort of gunk up and build up on it. You know, you could do the same on this one, to be honest. You wouldn't get so much um, traveling of the ink to the point, but if you wanted thicker lines, you could just let it get a bit gunked up. Very comfortable to hold. I love the pretty green color in it. They come in different colors and um, really nice for gifts as well, I think, for people. So that's the verdict on the glass pen and on the paper. So do let me know in the comments if you've ever tried a glass pen or if you're going to give one a go now. I'd also be really interested to hear if there's any other products you would like me to review. I haven't done many product reviews on this uh, on this channel yet, so I'd be really interested to know if there's any other things that you would like to see a video on. It's really great feedback for me. It helps me to plan future videos. If you've enjoyed this video, I think you're really going to like the video I made a little while ago. It's full of 10 different techniques that I use most commonly when painting botanical flower paintings. So botanical flower painting techniques, they're really easy and simple. I think you're going to find them so helpful. You can watch that video right now.